young men of color come up from the gloom of national neglect you have already been paid for come out of the shadow of irrational prejudices you owe no racial debt to history the blood of our bodies and the prayers of our souls have bought for you a future without shame bright beyond the telling of it kwanzaa means access it means access to your soul it means access to your people kwanzaa is like renewing your annual membership to community, to your family, to your culture, and most importantly, to yourself. Kwanzaa is expressed throughout the world now by people of African heritage who want to have that cultural connectedness. These are principles of what we're supposed to be doing 365, you know what I mean, and how we treat each other and how we look at the world. We did not petition or ask for permission to celebrate. We did it by Kuji Jaku self-determination. Lead in Flint and proud of I'm Sophia Taylor and I am made right here in Flint, Michigan. Born and raised, rehabbing the hood and I'm proud of it. This is Gary Jones coming to you live from downtown Flint and I'm made in Flint and proud of it. My name is John Wood. I'm made in Flint and proud of it. I'm Laura Panic. I'm making it in Flint and proud of it. I'm Molly Panic. I'm born in Flint. I'm making it in Flint. I'm staying in Flint and I am proud hey, of it. Hey, Dwayne Younger, chilling out down here at the Bucket Valley Fest. Made in Flint and proud of it. 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 Hey, I'm John Truman Marable, creator of Student of the Month. And I'm made in Flint and proud of it. 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 Hi, my name is Shandrika Moore, and I go to Evangelist Temple Church. Made in Flint and proud of it. What's the best decision you can make for your business? Your membership in the Flint Area Chamber of Commerce is the best investment that your small business can make. The GCBA wants to encourage the young lost entrepreneurs to get up off the bench, to join the team, and put their business ideas to work, to start filling those empty storefronts, and start filling those empty businesses. Hi, I'm Ryan Ishu with Remax Real Estate Team, and Flint's future is looking so bright, I have to wear shades. Visit us online, flintareachamber.org. Your membership helps us develop a strong, united voice for the business community. Building a better Flint and Gen I'd like to call this meeting of the Flint City Council to order. Today is December 12th, 2012. Let me apologize for being late. <clears throat> I uh, had a phone call that I had to take care of dealing with the um, events that are taking tomorrow. So it's my fault, and I apologize for that. Um, can we have roll call, please, Madam Clerk? Ms. Poplar? Present. Mr. Nolden? Here. Mr. Freeman? Here. Mr. Lawler? Present. Mr. Neely? Here. Mr. Wayhill? Here. Mr. Sargentson? Here. Mr. Kincaid? Here. Thank you. Okay. 
I'd ask Councilman Sargentson to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Will you please all stand and then after the pledge, remain standing for a few moments. We have a couple of announcements for a couple of moments of silences that we'd like to observe this evening. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, I'd like to ask everyone to please remain standing for a moment of silence. Councilman Coleman's aunt uh, passed away the other day. She was 110 years old, Gladys Anderson. And um, I was fortunate enough to go to her 70th uh, wedding anniversary. And is there someone else? Yes, uh, Mr. President, we have Billy Thompson, the former principal at Northwestern High School. He passed away after an extended illness, and the funeral was this past Saturday. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, Madam Clerk, we, I believe, have a couple of special <laughs> on the agenda this Mr. evening, is that correct? Mr. Mr. President, Yes. after we do the, um, the voting, I need to be excused because I do not feel well, um, but I had about 40 calls today asking me to come. So what happens, happens today. Okay. Thank you, and I'm glad you're here, and I'm sorry that you are not feeling well. Madam Clerk, special order. Yes, um, <clears throat> Mr. President, we have a special order or general order of business to consider the appointment of the First Ward City Council vacancy, which was uh, vacated by uh, former First Ward City Council member Del Rico Lloyd on November the 15th. So in order uh, to comply with the charter of the city council, the, the clerk will ask um, council members, <clears throat> and starting with the second ward council person, on um, who they would like to uh, vote for uh, to represent the first ward. It will go around. <clears throat> if there are not five votes, when the clerk tallies up the votes, then it will start again with the third ward and continue until, <clears throat> excuse me, one candidate receives five votes. Mr. President. Uh, Councilman Lawler. Yes, I just want to uh, make a statement to the council members and to the public. Um, on uh, Monday, December, excuse me, not Monday, Wednesday, December the 5th, when at 9 a.m. the Ten candidates were interviewed by four members of the council, and the four members of the city council were uh, Councilman Bryant Nolden, myself, uh, Councilman Neely, and Councilman Sargentson uh, conducted the interviews of the ten candidates. And uh, there is a communication that I prepared to submit to the members of the council um, with a recommendation of two of the top candidates that the majority of us felt uh, prevailed throughout that interviewing process. And I'd like to share with my colleagues a copy of those letters. Um, I think uh, there was a consensus, uh, a unanimous uh, consensus among us on Wednesday, but it may change today where one of us is not 
um, in agreement with the two top candidates that is mentioned in the letter. And the, uh, the last sentence of this statement, of this letter, uh, identifies the uh, two top candidates that prevailed through that interviewing process. And I just believe that um, it, is a, it, 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 it brings fairness to this process to have heard from uh, all of the candidates uh, to participate in the interviewing and uh, to review the resumes and the letters that were submitted to, uh, to the council members. But I also think it was very critical and important for uh, the members of the city council to be a part of that interviewing process. So having done so, uh, here are the recommendations to this body. Okay. Thank you. Madam Clerk, would you like to start the roll? Yes, I will, sir. Ms. Poplar? Claudia Crooms. Mr. Nolden? Leon Alamine. Pardon? Leon Alamine. Mr. Freeman? Claudia Croom. Mr. Lawler? The top candidate that was recommended from the uh, four that interviewed from the majority was Jacqueline Jordan. Mr. Neely? Jacqueline Jordan. Mr. Wayhill? Claudia Croom. Mr. Sargentson. Eric Mays. Mr. Kincaid. Claudia Crooms. <clears throat> okay, we have to do another round. <clears throat> Mr. Nolan. Claudia Croom. Mr. Freeman. Claudia Croom. Mr. Lawler. Jacqueline Jordan. Mr. Neely. Jacqueline Jordan. Mr. Wayhill. Claudia Croom. Mr. Sargentson. Jacqueline Jordan. Mr. Kincaid. Claudia Crooms. Ms. Pablo. Claudia Crooms. Okay. The vote at this time looks as though five for Claudia Croom. and three for Jacqueline Jordan. Okay. Is Claudia Crooms here this evening? Would you please come to the front? issue the oath of office and then you uh, may uh, take your seat as the first ward council representative. I do solemnly swear or affirm, or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The state of Michigan. The state of Michigan. The Charter of the City of Flint. The Charter of the City of Flint. 
And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And responsibilities. And responsibilities. As first ward city council person. As first ward city council person. In behalf of all the people. In behalf of all the people. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. If I could ask that you sign this, please. Mr. President, can yes, I be excused? Co Councilman Nolan, you can be excused. Thank you. <clears throat> Claudia, would you like to make a statement at this time, or would you rather pass and say something at the end of the I meeting. I would just like to thank all of the council people. You, you need to speak into the microphone, I would please. just like to thank all the council people that expressed their confidence in me by voting for me. And I'm asking everybody in the first war to please work with me. I love the first war. And we deserve better than what we have now. Thank you, Claudia. Okay, we have another special order. I believe, Councilman Neely, I believe this is yours, if I'm correct, or is it yeah, Councilman it's, Lawler's on that? It's a sure. shared responsibility between myself and Councilman Lawler. We both have the pleasure of, of serving the district that surrounds Kettering University. The university itself is in the sixth ward, but the, a part of the dormitories and a lot of Kettering property is in the fifth ward, so we both have uh, the pleasure in doing this, and so I will yield to my colleague, Councilman Lawler, to introduce our next special order guest. <clears throat> yes, um, we're going to ask if uh, Mr. Neil Sheridan will please come to the podium and do a presentation at this time during this special order. Thank you, thank you, Councilman. Um, thank you, Councilman Neely, also. And welcome, Councilwoman. Uh, it's a pleasure to follow democracy in action. So thank you. Uh, my name is Neil Sheridan. At Kettering University, I run the program TechWorks, which is uh, the Flint Area Technology Business Accelerator. We help uh, new companies and companies who are seeking to grow by offering new products and services. They have a technological basis. Two years ago, I had a chance to speak with most of you in person about uh, the Smart Zone program. It's a designation that the Michigan Economic Development Corporation <coughs> offers. Uh, it's competitive, and the window closed on us just as our application was about to be heard. So we went through the process of working with almost 30 different organizations in Flint, especially five key coalition partners, the universities and the Chamber of Commerce, uh, as well as the city about how would we help businesses in the area by using this designation. You may have heard of Detroit Tech Town, uh, Ann Arbor Spark, Automation Alley. These are all smart zone organizations that the state allowed to form in order to encourage this kind of business. The idea behind it is to get universities and businesses and entrepreneurs together and see what kind of jobs can be created, what kind of new opportunities can be formed. So in the time, in the last two years since we had that first opportunity close on us with the changing of the administrations, we now have had that reopened by the legislature last summer. They opened up the window for the applications a couple of weeks ago, and it closes next week. So we are working with our partners to update the original application. We have a lot of good news to report about what's happened in Flint since that time. We have powerful new uh, information that the Mott Foundation and the Chamber and others have helped us prepare about what is happening. What are the prospects for the technology companies that are most likely to succeed here? A good example of that is Diplomat Pharmacy. So we think of it as being a specialty pharmacy mail order business, but in fact it is a thriving high-tech IT-based business that is set to employ hundreds if not thousands of people in the next couple of years in Flint. What we seek to do is help entrepreneurs take high-tech ideas 
build businesses out of our universities, build businesses out of our existing companies, and attract new companies here to the Flint region in order to do that. Um, I'd like to just say that the uh, document that you have here has the new conceptual name for this organization. We're calling it GenXed Michigan, uh, made in Michigan. GenXed is a shortening of Genesee and Next. So we hope by this organization to help contribute over the next years to the creation of new manufacturing jobs, new innovation, and new opportunities for all of our citizens in this region. Thank you. No comments? Any from Councilman Neely or Lawler? Yes. I, uh, Mr. Sheridan, thank you so much for coming before Council today to present that to this body. And we appreciate all the great work that you uh, and Kettering University does for the city of Flint. We know we have great private-public partnerships in the, by way of <coughs> Kettering sponsoring uh, police officers and paying for police officers for the city of Flint and all the technology that you guys are bringing and also the funding of one of Flint's newest uh, police mini stations which will be right there on University Avenue and Chevrolet Avenue in a new bagel shop uh, that's being constructed right now. So we appreciate it. Uh, all the work that you do, and please tell Dr. McMahon uh, we thank you for, for uh, all the great work that you've done for the city of Flint. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you very much. N Neil, before you sit down, normally uh, the administration prepares when there's an application for a grant, mm -hmm. um, and, and I greatly appreciate you being here to talk about this. We've met on this probably, what, about a year ago? That's right. About, about a year ago. And the, and the grant application deadline is at the end of December? Well, this will be just a designation. There's no funding attached at this time. Okay. When we qualify for the comp, there's competitive effort here. So several other cities may be interested in pursuing this. There's three available designations. We know of only one other group that is seriously pursuing it, and that's Midland. But once we have the designation, then we'll, we will have the opportunity to propose uh, a longer-term financing solution based on the TIF model, so tax increment financing and the uh, local development financing authority, similar to what the downtown development authority uses. I would put out, though, that we expect that that will not be a major source of funding for this in the first five or even ten years because of the economic situation, especially around real estate. Our effort is to create services and programs that attract funding from state, federal, and other sources to provide these uh, businesses these kinds of growth uh, assistance. Okay. Nor normally when we do these grant applications and processes for projects like this, normally the uh, administration in a project like this, it would normally be the Department of Community and Economic Development that would work with you and Kettering to develop a let a, either a letter or a resolution of support from the city to go along with your grant application can you tell us as a body where, where you are in that process and is that something that you're expecting or is it something that um, is not necessarily needed in this application? Uh, well, Councilman, uh, we are preparing it. Uh, Ms. Atkinson is he helping us do that. Uh, the mayor and the emergency financial manager will both sign the proposal, which will be a fuller document upon the submission. Uh, we feel, though, that you know, the, the truth is, is that we'll be back to a normal operating model in the city in hopefully a, a reasonably uh, short period of time, and that we wanted to come brief the city council about this because the importance of this as a longer-term opportunity for the city. Uh, the, the mayor and his staff are preparing a uh, mayoral resolution which will look to what are the operating and eventually the financial implications uh, for the city as well as its commitment. We will include references to that resolution in a letter from the mayor in the package. Thank you very much. And thank you for coming this evening. Thank you very much. We uh, very much appreciate the council's support and your leadership for our city. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, that concludes our special orders. Um, there are no appointments this evening. Is that correct, Madam Clerk? That's correct. Um, petitions and unofficial communications, are there any additional? No, not at this time. Are there any additional communications from city officials um, at this time, Madam Clerk? No. Okay. Now is the time for the public to be able to address the city council. <clears throat> the clerk will call your name. Please come to the microphone, give us your name. Um, for the record, um, <coughs> limit your comments to five minutes and refrain from personal attacks on individuals or institutions.
And our first speaker this evening, Madam Clerk? Our first speaker is Mr. Eric Mays. And he's coming in the back door. <clears throat> Mr. Mays? Good evening. If you notice, I put my name in the slip because I anticipated I wouldn't be sitting in that seat. I've talked to all of the council people throughout the week. I didn't attempt to call you, Jackie. Uh, Councilwoman Popular, um, Councilperson Wade Hill, you couldn't be reached. Now, the word in the street is that Wade Hill might not run again, Josh Freeman might not run again, and Scott Kincaid might not run again. Whether that turns out to be true, we'll see. But we were told from the beginning and from the weeks of behind the scenes, we were told that Claudia Kroom had the five votes. We waited. That turned out to be true. Some of us say the deal was cut when Del Rico waited to resign after the leadership vote for president and vice president, the deal was cut. Claudia Kroon decided not to show up at Hasselbrink with the citizens and the residents. She was out at Region 1C. That information comes to me very well that, Ms. Kroon, you chose to be at Region 1C with the political people who can get these votes versus the people. We're headed into an election. I've seen this before. Del Rico Lloyd, he resigned. The first ward, Del Buchanan, he resigned. 43 votes away from Del Rico. I don't know what criteria you guys used in the interview process. We're curious as the public, if you guys believe Jackie Jordan was the top person interviewed, then reveal to the public and not just your behind the scenes politics, tell us who was your second one. See, I'm tired of the behind the scenes politics. I'm tired of the backroom deals. Mr. Sargentson, I, I, I appreciate you saying my name the first round. And we talk about the North End, the first ward, blacks and whites. We've got five black council people and they can't get together for the North End. Control all the votes, can't get together. Lawler and, Sha and Neely can't get together with Kincaid, Del Rico, BB, and Josh. This is a, such a dysfunctional city council. They have proved to me today that we're back to business as usual. I thought for sure we would get revealed in the front room who the top two candidates was. They wouldn't tell us. They just passed it out behind the scenes in a sheet of paper. Well, I'm here to tell you, I've been cordial with all of you guys. It's a new day. All of that has stopped. All of the conversation about working with the council, not you, Ms. Kroon. You've got yet to prove yourself. I won't congratulate you because you kind of neglected us too when you didn't show up at Hasselbrink. So I'm not going to congratulate you. I'm going to watch you. I'm not going to help you and coach you. I'm going to run against you. This is a contest, and it's a contest between those in power and those of us who fought. Seven people vote to invite the emergency manager in. The vote was seven to two. That set told me something. Now, the little people, we got out and fought hard. Let me sum up, if I may. I know the bell is going off. Go ahead. We fought hard to prove to the seven people that we the people, the voters, when y'all vote wrong, we can vote right, and we overturn Public Act 4. I was in Lansing last week. I wonder where the city council was at. They're passing a new version of Public Act 4. We're in a legal fight. Jackie Jordan, Ms. Kroon, I don't think they can compare legally in filing legal briefs and fighting. I'm in the fight right now with Peter Bay, the city attorney, who y'all crying about, he won't help us. You got to learn to help yourself. 
I wanted that seat not for me, not just to help y'all, but to help the city of Flint. People is dying. When y'all vote and don't provide services, you got blood on your hands. Ms. Poplar, you're going to have blood on your hands as well. A record murder rate. We've told you over and over, it's not the patrol bureau, it's the detective bureau. We've said over and over, jobs versus jails. Y'all got the money, set still, let them bring in money for jail. One but nine people in there. We could have used that two to five million for jobs. I know the rules, I'll sum up. You got blood on your hands now. You've lost some of your cooperation with us. And believe me, when I say us, I speak for a group. You've lost your cooperation with us because you won't communicate with us. I want to go on record. All of the talk that the community has heard, listen to me, community, I'm bypassing the council. They said, work together with the mayor and the council. The mayor ain't showed up yet. He's still down there with Mike Brown now. Y'all tried to act like y'all with the people. Y'all just ignored the will of the people. No different than the will that the governor in Lansing is ignoring the will of the people. The will of the people spoke on this appointment. Y'all did the backroom deal. Scott, I appreciate your conversation earlier today. Mr. Neely, I appreciate your conversation. Mr. Lawler, I appreciate yours. I didn't agree with it. Josh, you were a gentleman through the whole process. Mr. Sargentson, appreciate you. Guess what's going to happen now? I'm going to tell everything moving, every political move, every reason. Y'all are the reasons that we're in trouble. You're managing the city wrong. Eric, Eric, hey, excuse me. Don't interrupt the speaker. I'm going to ask you to leave. Okay, Eric, you, you've more than I'm, exceeded your and, five and I'm minutes. summing up. All right. I appreciate that courtesy, Scott, because while we're here dealing serious business and the audience members who come and don't understand, I can forgive him. When, beg your pardon? Excuse, okay, enough, all right? There's no interaction or I'm going to ask you to leave. Eric, I'm going to ask you one more time. Please sum up. You know the rules. I've summed up. Thank you. And I know that the job has got to be done. When you deal with the council and the mayor and the administration trying to get services, trying to do what's right, and then you deal with people in the audience and in the community who have a lack of understanding, we've got a mess. I say today is a sad day for me. But I put the slip in. Thank I you. say I understand the politics. I'm going to be the first speaker, and I'm going to speak after this appointment has been made. Some people are happy. Some people are let down. I know it's a lot of family members and others, and you yourself, Ms. Kroom, you are probably ecstatic and happy. But let me say this, and then I'll sit down. First Ward, Ms. Kroom, you coming into a body where it needs leadership. You've got to try to provide leadership. They ain't meeting in committees right now. The emergency manager's been gone. You've got to suggest the committee meetings should start back up. They'll meet here if there's nothing on the agenda. They won't stay over and talk about crime and jobs. They'll get out of here. It's a part-time job. They meet once or twice a month and could meet all day long. If they spend as much time meeting in the front room with us, as they did in the back room for your appointment, we would be moving in the right direction. Y'all got to quit playing as today, start meeting in the front room, just like y'all met in the back room. Thank you, Eric. God bless. Us, not y'all. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. President, Councilman Lawler, the, uh, the first, the top runner for um, of the candidates was Jackie, Jacqueline Jordan. Eric, Eric, please. Jacqueline Jordan and Tyrone Croom. Okay, anyone else? Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Ms. Vanita Simmons Washington. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Council. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I just would like to. No one called my name, so I'm okay with that. But I would like to say this is an, a, this is an abomination 
of everything I've ever known and I've ever seen. These things were said, Mr. Mays, can I have the floor? Eric, floor? Eric. <coughs> These things. Just excuse me for a minute. Please make sure we start restart our clock for us. Yeah, we okay. stopped your clock, so. Thank you. We'll, we'll give you your five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Okay, you can start speaking now. Thank you. I'm sorry I'm not as radical as uh, Mr. Mays. I've learned that um, politics is such a game. And I'm very, very, very disappointed in some of the council members. There are some that I am not. To have a, uh, <laughs> to have individuals come to be seen and heard and to explain as to why they would want this particular seat and to look around and not have a full council there to address those individuals or to address. Excuse me for a minute. Freezer time. Can we give the police a call? I'm calling them right now. Wow. We just take a five minute. Hey, Scott, we're gonna, we're gonna five, take minute a five minute break. And just okay, that'll sit be down. fine. You know, I wish you people would at least have enough courtesy to take that out in the hall, because that's all we ask. We're trying to hold a meeting here. Please. I'm not going to. I'm going to wait till the police officers okay. arrive. Okay. So you, you can just have a seat and we'll call you back up.
Okay, and as you can call the speaker back up. Miss Vanita Simmons Washington. <clears throat> and you will be allocated your full five minutes. Thank you. And I apologize for the disruption. Not a problem. Um, the process for the candidates and the way it was done was an abomination to the first ward uh, citizens. I cannot believe that it was done in such a manner and that certain members of the council would turn their backs and not even give us due process. This, th the citizens in this city deserve due process. And if we cannot get due process from our, our leaders, then you can trust and believe it's not done. We're still going to work hard. We're still going to do the things that are needed to be done in this city. I am just ashamed. I have been in the political arena all of my life. And I watched the movement of my father. I watched the movement of my mother. And to see the antics that have taken place today <coughs> is an abomination, not only to the First Ward citizens, but to the, the citizens of the city of Flint. I want to thank uh, Mr. Lawyer, Mr. Neely, Mr. Sargison, for taking the time to at least give me the opportunity to speak. That meant more than anything else. But for the rest of the council members who took the option to turn their backs and not even hear the voices of the people, I am a citizen of this city. I have been in this city for over 50 years. I think that we have, to, we have to make some changes. We have to make some great changes. And I want to say this to Mrs. Crooms. Mrs. Crooms, the citizens of this city, we will be watching. And the most hurtful thing that you could have ever done was not to even appear, because there were over 100 there who wanted to hear what you had to say. Even in the hallway, when you walked in and you were spoke to, you rolled your eyes and ignored us. But we are here. We are going to be here, whether you work with us or not. This has to change. It really has to change. You need to think about your actions and how you deal with the citizens in this city. You firmly believe that we will just go away. I'm here to tell you, and I've been meeting in some back rooms too. We're not going away. We're here to stay. And we're going to fight for the first ward. We're going to fight for the city of Flint because you have demolished everything that my father put in place. You have demolished human resource, victims' right, the ombudsman. You have given this city no option at all to even hear our cry. Hmm. Our citizens have nowhere to go. We have no one. So whatever the deal is on the table, sub good, because God is still on the throne, and I'm telling this council to be still and know that he is still God. Thank you. <clears throat> our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next, our next speaker is Mr. Harry Ryan. Mr. Harry Ryan. <clears throat> Good evening, Council. Good evening. My name Good is evening. Harry Ryan. Um, what I really feel today is this, that I look forward for 10 years coming down here at my council people as my representatives to make the right decision, even though we're through the emergency manager, even though I see certain parts of the city being left alone. But I want to say the disrespect that I was shown and our award was shown for the full council people who not to even come. If you made a real deal, you could have at least came. It shows me, without a doubt, what clarity is supposed to be about. The city charter says it's supposed to be transparent, 
I see no transparency in this whatsoever. And you show an example of your leadership. There's only eight months away, but you know, I believe that this would not be this way if there was some transparency. This cannot continue. I believe in the process, but our process evidently somewhere has gone astray. You know, you didn't come to the forum, I could understand that, but not to come to the interviews either. You're paid by the citizen of the city of Flint. So I assume, because I asked the question interview, where were you at? You chose not to come. So that's enough for me. Now, I would like to say to Mr. Neely, Mr. Lawler, Mr. Sargent, and, and, and others that came, and, law, and uh, Mr. Nolan, I appreciate at least you came to the community. And I'm going to say this, that our ward is going to get together now behind this, because it does not make sense when you don't address the whole city. It shows the thought, the thoughtfulness behind the, our leaders. You are our leaders. It really hurt me to see you not come. And you know, this is not my first time down here. I've been elected by you nine years in a row. But to me, at this point, what do the people do? We have emergency manager. This process didn't go right. That's why we have such a low turnout in the North Ward. They think you do what you want to, no matter what. And if you play politics right, you'll get a spot. But if you love your area, you won't get a spot. But it has to stop. I'm begging, be accountable for what you took this job for. Look at what the charter says. It says you're supposed to make things right. You're supposed to be about things being fair. Keep the mayor fair. I see none of this happening. I know you don't have too much power right now, but all you had was the people. And you're losing that now, because no matter, this is not about color. This is about first war, people are shooting every day. People are climbing up under beds. This is extreme to stand and see this happening. I cannot believe it. I'm saying to myself, is this what we come to? You have to be better leaders. I'm begging you, never let nothing like this happen again, because the first word is totally very unpleased. It shows the leadership. This is not just the first word. This is a whole city. So you have to show you care about the whole city, everybody. And, and you know, and I, if I look at that, I know I probably won't get no comments, but a lot of people came and a lot of people didn't come. But this is going to be on TV, and people are going to see how and what you care about the first war. I thank you for giving me the time. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President. Ma Madam. Thank you. Um, first of all, and I really didn't want to go into this, but I will, because I noticed all of the hostility towards the ones that did not show up for the interview. So hopefully you will accept my apology. I had a doctor's appointment that was scheduled six months ago to have a procedure to be done on my back. Once the procedure was done, I could not leave out of my house for the next 48 hours. I could not lift anything. So six months ago, I had no idea that Mr. Delrico Lloyd was leaving, nor did I have any idea that we had to put a meeting immediately, ASAP. And I was not about to change this procedure because they need to look to see what is going on with my back. So hopefully you will accept my apology. Now to those that came, thank you for coming. But to all of you that put your application in, you have less than 30 days before each and every one of you can stop on the second floor and pick up a petition to run for the first ward. And then you will allow the people in the first ward to speak as if they want you. 
So I am very sorry for the hostility that you have because I did not come. So I have done all of the apologizing that I am going to do. Thank you very much to the ones that will be running in January. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mr. Chris Del Maroney. Thank you. My name is Chris Del Maroney. I live in Flint, Michigan. Um, it, let me say, Claudia, congratulations um, on the appointment. I, I'm not. Um, I'm not trying to. Push the button down, Chris. There you go. It's on now. It's on now. All right. I'll start over. Thank you. My name is Chris Del Maroney. I live in uh, Flint, Michigan. Uh, Claudia, congratulations. I'm not sure what all went into the decision by council. I mean, I, I, I personally know, you know, many of the candidates that were, were interested. Um, and, and I, I'm sure council took the, into account, uh, you know, maybe people attending meetings here at City Hall, uh, speaking, uh, people appointed to different uh, committees. Uh, being a community activist, things of that nature. What concerns me, and, and I might be totally wrong on this, but what I'm hearing is that the resignation of the council person from the first ward was delayed so that it would come within a one-year time frame so there would not be an election by the people and simply an appointment by council and the election would not take place until the regular election in November. And if that is the case, I would truly be disappointed. Because let me remind council and others in the community, we just went through a process to repeal Public Act 4. And basically, one of the things that was at issue with Public Act 4 we heard the, the term dictator used and how the dictator was telling our community what had to be done, what the community must do. And the community could not vote on it. And the community's vote in, in, in the election for mayor and, and council, it did not count for anything. And if in fact what has happened is true that someone put off their resignation until some date so that the community could not vote? I'm just wondering what side of the mouth everyone is speaking out of. Because it's unfortunate that the right to vote would be abridged simply through politics. It doesn't make sense to criticize Lansing and then to have it happen in our own community by ourselves. My other concern this evening is, is Claudia is on our board of review, and I'm not sure that one can sit on city council and be on the board of review at the same time. And if that's the case, where one cannot hold both positions, tomorrow the board of review meets and we meet on the poverty exemptions and for the veterans things. And council has the right to appoint. <clears throat> and my concern as the chairperson of that committee is that we may not have a quorum tomorrow. So I, I don't know if council can take action this evening to appoint someone from the first ward to the board of review. The last I knew there was also an opening out of the eighth ward. I had also heard some, some two people from other wards were moving out of the city of Flint. And, I, you know, our, our board needs to function. And, I mean, you're meeting here tonight, and it's the 11th hour. So I hope politics did not come in to the appointment. Claudia, I wish you the best of luck, if I can help in any way. I mean, you know I'll help you. 
Uh, we've sat on the board together for, I think, probably three years now. Um, but we need to function as a board, as a board of review tomorrow. So your help would be appreciated this evening. Thank you. Councilman Lawler? Yes, um, I have the same concern as uh, Mr. Delroni just mentioned about the board of reviews having a quorum on tomorrow. Um, I was notified last week and I uh, sent that notification to uh, city clerk's office, uh, Ms. Brown, regarding the fifth ward representative uh, who has, uh, was injured and will not be able to be a part of that process. So um, I'm concerned then therefore there may not be a quorum for that on tomorrow. Councilman Neely. Yes, uh, two things. Uh, maybe we should take action if we have a recommendation maybe from the 8th the Ward, which is uh, Councilman Sargison, if you have a recommendation for a person to appoint to that position and or Mrs. Kroom has a, a person, maybe we can take action tonight. Now, the person that uh, Councilman Lawler speaks of is not resigning. They're just injured. Right. So in order to effectuate to make sure that those people who are applying for uh, poverty tax exemptions and other things that the uh, board will be reviewing. Uh, Mr. Del Maroney, I don't see you, but Mr. Del Maroney, how many, how many more do you need to have a quorum? If you're going to be absent, you need one person or two? My understanding is we need to have five to nine Right. Right. So tomorrow you're anticipating um, in the absence of Mrs. Kroom, you would only have four in the absence? Uh, Mike, Chris, come to the microphone, please. Obviously, Claudia won't be there. I think there's an opening in the 8th Ward. I, I'm just hearing about uh, the 5th Ward tonight. Uh, and, and I've also heard that there might be two that have, have moved out of the city of Flint. So, I mean, that, that, that would be five people there, and it we'd be short. So, so training? Uh, yeah. So before, yeah, you're right with that, Mr. Uh, Sargison. So with that, you're anticipating on missing one for a quorum, if you have to have five. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And yeah, you bring up the, the thing of training. Um, I, you know, I, I, I don't think there's any requirement that says one must go through a certain, certain training process before you can be on the board. Um, but you know, the, the question might be, can they make a decision tomorrow if they're appointed tonight? Well, it's my understanding that the 8th Ward has a qualified candidate. Is that correct? Did, did you? I'm not aware of that. Oh, Mr. President, um, can, can you get with the assessment office tomorrow and say, saying that we might have five people, we might have four, this person might have moved out, that person might. Can you just get with the assessment office tomorrow, and if there's an issue, then we can always have a special meeting. We can appoint hmm. somebody later this week. If we need to point somebody to get to a quorum, and then the board of review and say meeting tomorrow can meet later in the week. Well, let, let me, well, we we can do that, but we also, um, if um, Claudia has someone in mind for the board of review, or if Councilman Sargentson has someone in mind for the board of review, we can appoint that person tonight. Prepare the resolution for tomorrow, Councilman Freeman. Yeah. Well, we know that there's two vacancies. No, it's more than two. Mr. President. Councilwoman Poplar. Okay, I have my person moved from out of town, and I've made a couple phone calls trying to get someone from the second ward because we don't have anybody on the board of review now. Okay. All right. So, so is there? In the first ward, do you have an appointment in the second ward, Jackie? Yes, I need a person. But she's just not going to be there, correct? Right. Nope. She, she's moved. Okay, so you got a vacancy. I have a vacancy. Do you have anybody in mind to fill that seat at this time? No. Okay. <laughs> Councilman Sargentson, do you have anybody in mind to fill your uh, eighth yes, ward? Yes, I do. What was the name? Alan Griggs. Alan Griggs. Is that in the eighth ward of the city? Young men of color. Come up from 